Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Hi, this is Claire. Before the podcast starts, Ruth and I want to tell you about an upcoming opportunity, the Cottrell Scholar Award. This award is to early career teacher scholars in chemistry, physics, and astronomy, and provides significant discretionary funds for research. The eligibility requirements to apply are that you are in the third year of your first tenure-line position in one of those departments at a U.S. or Canadian university. Proposals are due this year on July 1, 2020. Full guidelines and eligibility are on their website, which we've posted in the liner notes. We wanted to bring this up now because we just learned about a webinar being offered with tips for effective proposal preparation. You can attend the webinar on either March 16th or March 17th of 2020. The link to register is also in the liner notes. And now, on to the podcast. Hi, this is the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. I'm Ruth. I'm Claire. And today we're going to talk about teaching lab sections. Uh, but before we do that, Ruth, how is it going? So my week was okay. I noticed that part of my goals for this semester was kind of being quite conscious in how I use my time. Right. And that all kind of went to hell this week. And I feel like I had really nice chats with people and was definitely enjoying it, but was not deliberate about my time mm. and not... You know, when you think all of the downtime bits, you're going to like achieve all these things. Totally. And I was just like, well, what if maybe I've only got 30 minutes to class. Maybe I should just chat with this person instead of doing the things. So it was nice. And I think maybe I was mildly under the weather. So next week, fresh start. Fresh start. Back to deliberate use of time. Cool. How about you? Oh, my week was good. So I wanted to add to... Last week's we talked about research students, mm -hmm. and I wanted to talk about, I, I realized and was kind of thinking this week how I'd forgotten to say that how important it is, I think, to ask students to join your research group as opposed to waiting for them to ask you. And so, of course, of the students that ask to join, a lot of them are fantastic, but there's also a lot of potential fantastic research students who don't think to ask for whatever reason. And I've had really good luck with both scenarios. So anyway, that was just a thing that I, I felt was really lacking from I forgot to say wanted and to be it sure. is, and it's such a I mean it is an equity issue too right because yes. sometimes the people who maybe wouldn't have the confidence to they were just wouldn't assume mm -hmm. that you would want to work with them right even though they're awesome and so yeah giving them an that's awesome yeah so I yeah. just wanted to cool. put that idea out there yeah and I think I need to be more conscious of that too yeah because it's really easy you know to prioritize the people who come ask and and in some ways that makes sense, but not to forget the other people Well, it's too. funny because sometimes I have asked someone and they're like, no, but I'm not an expert in coding. And you're like, oh, this, because they don't necessarily understand like there's an exchange, uh -huh. like they do work for you, but you teach them how to do it. It's right. not that they should, you know, they're not an employee that's getting a job. And so, sure. yeah, some of them don't really don't seem to know that. So yeah, right. that's awesome. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. And do you have a quote for us this week? I do. And um, and so this is another Harry Potter one. And so what I, I was thinking, we either need to rein me back on Harry Potter or maybe or it's go the unofficial. All in. Yeah. yeah, that's I, the, I, the I, thing that we do now. That's so. what I think we should do. I don't think we should <laughs> rein you in. And so this one is one of my favorite quotes. Um, and it's Professor Lupin, who's also I one of my favorite. Lupin. Yeah, he's so awesome. And it's right after Professor Snape had really said some biting um, condescending stuff about Neville. Oh, Neville. And Professor Lupin says, I was hoping that Neville would assist me with the first stage of this operation, he said, and I'm sure he will perform it admirably. And I just love that, of what a great way to boost someone's self-esteem. Um, it was just so smooth, and uh, just a good example of how I want to be, you know? Well, but you just told a, a story of how you're boosting people's confidence well, great. by like asking them to join your research group. Inspired so, by Lupin. Yeah, Lupin. He's awesome. Okay, so today we're talking about teaching lab sections. Yes. And as I have nothing good to say, I'm going <laughs> to hand over to you. So what has been working well for you okay. in labs? So one thing that I um, added as an assignment, as a pre-lab, before lab sections, that I really... I really like it. Um, oh, cool. It's 
So normally, I think the kind of the default thing that I would think of with pre-labs is to say, you know, read through the lab and find these bits of trivia that are in the lab to encourage you to read through the lab in advance. Um, and I do think it's really important for the students to read through the lab in advance. And the first year, I guess it was just the first year I was teaching, um, I really had a lot of trouble with that. Students mm -hmm. would come in and say, gosh, these labs are not doable in three hours. You know, you're just not giving us enough time. And it's very true that I am intentionally giving long labs and I'm intentionally giving them procedures that aren't, you know, um, just follow the directions kind of procedures. So they do have to really read carefully and interpret what the procedure means. So I'm doing all that intentionally and it does take a long time, but I was feeling like the issue was they weren't reading them enough in advance. So anyway, I instituted these pre-labs and the pre-lab is that they, before they come to lab, they have to come up with three possible mistakes that someone oh. could make while doing that day's lab. And for each mistake, they have to come up with an explanation for whether that would make their final value too high or too low or what would happen to the final value. And then um, if there's any way to fix it, either with chemically in the lab or mathematically or something like that. Whoa. And um, yeah, it kind of takes a while to convey all those pieces as what I'm expecting them to mm -hmm. do. But I definitely saw an improvement in students having read the lab per procedure in advance. And, um, and really my goal is for them to understand what's happening chemically at all the different stages of their chemistry experiment. And so my hope is that that will help them understand what's going on. And then when they do make a mistake, whether it's one of the ones they thought of in advance or not, hopefully with their improved chemical understanding, they have a better idea what they might need to do to fix it. I have so many things to say about <laughs> this. So one for context, this isn't like an intro lab. Correct. Right. right. So yes, they do have are. some experience. Yes, yeah, that's true. Totally. And then how do you, do you grade it? I do grade it. And it's very much, did you do all those criteria that I asked for? You know, and I don't mind if they logic it through backwards and the final value was higher, but you know, the mistake would have led the final value to be too high and they accidentally thought it'd be too low. As long as they thought it through and it, that's great. That's really what I'm going for. So and it's like... Do you grade it like on Canvas or something and say, that's our like online thing? Do you say, oh yeah, nice reasoning, but it would actually be too low? Or... Right. Yeah. They hand them in physically and um, my grading is very simple. It's check, which is one out of one if you did all the things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll write a little note like, actually it would make it lower because X, Y, Z... Um, but it's still a full check. And then if they didn't do it all, you know, maybe they wrote a bunch of mistakes, but then they didn't get to explaining how that would impact the results. Then that's a check minus, which is 0.75 out of one. So it's still three quarters of the points. And um, if they don't hand it in, it's a zero. Dude. So that's okay. So there's a few things. One, because I, this is not to do with labs, but I was trying to get them to read material before class. Uh -huh. And I was doing the thing, like you said, where it's almost like find this piece of information right. in there. And it was such a waste of time because oh, they yeah. would just literally find the one thing. But this is really making people think about it beforehand. It really and I like the idea that you're suggesting straight away that there could and will be mistakes. And then like what do you and moving on to like, what can you do to fix them? Right. So like, what would you do? This isn't the end of the world, but how would you totally. address it? And there's a whole lot of stuff in physics stuff about making predictions. And then once you've made a prediction, when you do hear the correct answer, it means a lot more. Mm -hmm. But that's cool. Yeah. And what do they, how do they like it? Or I mean, I don't know if they really do like it. <laughs> <laughs> but how does it affect their learning? Um, but another hope that I, I hope they get out of it, and I think they do, is um, one, of the, one of the key things that they're learning in this class in particular is how to get accurate results and they're graded on accuracy of their results mm -hmm. and that's a big step for that class you know moving up from general chemistry where that's hardly ever a factor uh, yeah. sometimes but in this class it's a big factor and so uh, my hope is that by thinking through all the impacts of these mistakes they're also thinking through what parts of the procedure are really critical to getting the right answer and um, maybe that'll help them get the right answer that is really cool and then they're already having to like map out the procedure to analyze. Right. Isn't there this whole thing with like Bloom's taxonomy? 
I forget what that is. I do too, a little bit. It's like all these words that talk about learning. And so like repeating information is like the lowest level. Oh, and right. then like synthesis is the highest level. But it seems like, I, I can't actually articulate this properly. But you know what I mean? The idea of like taking the thing you have to do and then analyzing where things could go wrong. Like mm. that's some higher order thinking. Yeah, I for think sure. So. That's cool. And then like, it's not super punitive, right? No, if it's they not. Just yeah, the you just have to do it. Exactly. That is a cool skill set. And one thing that I enjoy is it often happens that someone will say, gosh, I just couldn't think of any mistakes you could make in this. And then they'll be like halfway through the lab. They're like, I've already thought of five mistakes, you know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know. I think that's a, a fun learning experience, at least that is cool. from my perspective. That is really cool. I wonder too, like, does it mean, are they able to share their, inf- you know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. oh, dude, your high, your answer's too high. Yeah, I totally. think that's because. It's a good question. Blah, blah, blah. That is super cool. I really, that is, yeah, very cool. Cool. Oh, and then one more thing I just want to yeah. say is I do, in the first few labs they do, I um, compile all their results and see in general, you know, and then I show it to them in a slide and lecture and say, so we can see that some people were too high, some people were too low, but overall, the class averaged out a little bit too low. So let's discuss what does that mean the main issues were? Um, and it could be mistakes or it could just be, um, you know, not being careful enough at this part led to losing some of your product here. And that's why overall, probably the class was low. I don't just kind of a reflection of the. That is lab. really cool. So, yeah, I like I'm into it. it. OK, so what is uh, uh, working for you? Yeah, so. I guess I really I struggle with labs like teaching physics labs I think partly I'm I'm not super practical person and yeah like I was telling a student like I shot a girl with a capacitor in in class once in undergrad wait what do you mean like you tossed it exploded and like it hit her across the room in the head and I remember my friend saying like does that red light flashing mean anything and I was like I don't think so and then everything like exploded and it went up in smoke (laughs) so yeah so I think some of the stuff I struggle with is that but one thing that actually did work well today so I went to a physics conference and somebody was talking about they were really inspired by trying to get the students connected with material that might be relevant to them and so they did a whole semester of like putting in superhero stuff And he had talked about this thing, Deadpool, which I haven't actually seen. I don't know what that is. It's some, it's like a risque superhero. Oh, okay, okay. And um, I think it's Marvel. I feel like that's... One of those things, okay. But so this guy, anyway, is on a bridge and he jumps off the bridge and lands through like the sunroof of a car. Whereas the car is driving underneath. And so today, our lovely stockroom technician helped me set up this experiment where we have like a little cart I show them the video clip and just tell them okay you're going to do this and so I give them the cart and there's a little man with a magnet and what can you calculate when you should Ah. let go of him so that he'll land on the cart and they were super into it they were very excited about it and they were taking videos of it and they were really into it so that was super fun today and some of them though I didn't give like a lot of guidance and I think that's a little stressful for them and like mm-hmm. I definitely talk to them about it but some of them really like relish that and they're like oh how are we going to solve this and kind of get into it so that one actually worked really well cool that yeah. sounds great and I think one thing I have been doing is rejecting lab reports I just rejecting can't, them. what do you mean well so I haven't been doing them lately okay and so I have been getting them to write out all of their work that they do on a whiteboard and then take a picture of it and upload that or like if they make any graphs or anything upload those as well but yeah I don't know somehow I think this is a bit controversial but I feel like chemistry would you just you guys do labs so differently Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of um skill building in terms of writing lab reports or that kind of thing yeah and we I don't totally know when we're supposed to do that or when it just hasn't really happened yet so okay it would just be they answer a series of questions, uh-huh. but they it's really grading them is sort of pointless. OK, I don't know what it, it just hasn't been working for me. So yeah. I was trying to come up with other ways of them disseminating their information. Uh huh. So, yeah, so that's that's all I have. So it sounds like your goal for what they get out of the lab 
that has nothing to do with lab reports or 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 it, they could put it all on a whiteboard and so that yeah and that certainly at this point because they're just starting intro mechanics okay. and, and some of them anyway are still pretty freaked out about it and so some of them are also like today they were like it worked like physics works and How you're like fun. holy moly like who knew because sometimes <laughs> they don't believe that the equations are relevant uh -huh. to what you're doing and especially in the beginning we pretend everything is a point mass but it actually still works effectively so you can calculate the time for the little green man to fall how awesome yeah so that was kind of cool and i think yeah so that's where i'm at with that so today was good i have not like there's a couple of labs i think that i do get kind of excited about and i think really impact student learning and the other ones i think other instructors can make them really impact mm. student learning but i have not been doing that i see so maybe they're the kind of thing you have to come up with something that you actually are excited about yeah before it's it's all of this stuff is like can you imagine if we had because so, everybody in our department talks a lot about it would be great if every we could rewrite a lot of the labs uh-huh but it's just who who's going to do that right. and when would they have the time right like it seems like something we need to like assign units to mm -hmm. or something like that so one thing we've been doing in the chemistry department is um hiring students to revise a particular lab Ooh. and so um okay i'm writing a, this down a week because this is yeah it's revolutionary so it was um it was a couple students got hired for, yeah, it was, they had a particular lab they needed to revise. And in one case it was, gosh, we're using these chemicals that are super toxic and they really don't have to be for this lab, but we would need to totally revise it with different chemicals. So can you work on that? And they spent the semester, I, I don't know, not that many hours a week, um, maybe three, you know, get coming in every week and working on it. Wow. And, um, so, I mean, that could be a way of... That could be a way. That would be super burden. cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially if you had an idea of this is the direction we want to go. Or you could even say, here's this lab. Right now it doesn't have much context. Can you come up with some way of making this relatable oh. and exciting? And I think, you fun. know, and I think, um, maybe this isn't the best thing to say. Because people <laughs> are listening, but I think I fundamentally don't know what our departmental goals are with labs. Uh -huh. And I guess that's what I mean. It seems like you guys have very clear skill sets I that see. you want the students to have mm -hmm. by the end of it. And I think for us, there's definitely witnessing physical phenomena is mm -hmm. it is really impactful but i'm not totally sure what the skill set is i see that they're supposed to have at the end so i think if i could maybe clarify that in my own mind a little right. bit like it was clear to me today uh -huh. what i wanted them to get out of it and i think maybe i was a bit more enthusiastic than normal mm -hmm. and so they were a bit more enthusiastic than mm -hmm. normal and yeah so i think maybe that's what i need to do is kind of ruminate on what I actually want them to get out of each lab. So do you think that that's, is it a fundamental thing? Like in physics, people are spending much more time coding or something. And so they don't need the hands-on skills. I mean, surely there's hands-on. There's definitely hands-on skills. And it's sort of like, say, electronics is this whole field of like hands-on skills. That's like right. your electronic sort of prowess. And I definitely think just the whole concept of graphing things and mm, understanding what yes. to put on each axis and then oh look then the slope is going to be equal to that seems super relevant and i think yeah so i don't know yeah that's what i need to think about is like what are we actually trying to get out of totally it? yeah yeah so what is it you are working on so i'm i i'm actually satisfied with how this is but it's something i think about regularly and wonder if i should change periodically i guess anyway it's i like the way both ears are positive <laughs> both of my you're like, i do really like yeah. labs oh that's um, awesome yeah so it's the balance between letting them come up with things independently and really move their own direction for the lab experiment mm -hmm. versus giving them more of directions and um and I try, you know, again, I'm talking about the upper division classes. And so never am I just giving them a recipe to follow. But I do pretty much say, here's what you need to get done today. They have to figure out how to make it happen. But it's all very much doable in the lab period. And if something goes wrong and they don't finish it by the end of lab, I say, well, that's too bad. That's as much time as we had for that. We're going to move on to the next experiment next time. Um... And some instructors do it more like, 
well, you're going to either find some other time to come in and finish it oh. or we're going to keep doing that same lab until you get your results and then we can go on to the next lab. There's lots of different ways that people do it that give more time for them to um, actually get good results, you know? And, yeah. and, and I feel like I do give them enough time to get good results if there's not some problem. And then even I'm... There's even a more extreme, um, like my undergraduate analytical chemistry class, the lab was, there was one lab for the entire semester, but it was a big project. It was incredibly self-driven. You know, the mm -hmm. students got to decide. I mean, we ended up picking this topic and it was analyzing the metal content on the outside of children's toys. Wow. And and it was and so grin. we had the whole semester. So yeah, we went out to Goodwill and we got a bunch of toys that had paint on the outside and then we came up with how we were going to analyze them and we only used one analytical instrument the whole semester, but we spent a lot of time working on it. And so it was much more in depth, much more us figuring out what we wanted to do over the whole semester. Um and so that's really cool. But yeah, so I'm kind of balancing where do I actually want to be on this spectrum? Because right now I'm much more like, we're just going to move on to the next thing. I want to get you through all these different things. Um, and like I say, I'm definitely not giving them a recipe, but the, uh, there's benefits the whole, it's the whole range so of that spectrum, I think. Is there, like, is there an expectation for the students who go through this class that they'll know X amount of stuff for the next class? Like, are you really at liberty to be like, okay, screw it, we'll just spend the entire time on this one experiment? Or is it like... The other professors in the future will be like, geez, Claire, <laughs> can't they do this and this? Um, I think, I mean, the, the two analytical chemists, myself and the one other person, I think are pretty free to choose what we want to do. Um, I do really like the way that I'm currently doing it where they go through a bunch of different topics that they can, I tell them, put this on your resume. You have worked with all these instruments. You're not yeah. an expert at any of them yet, but you have seen them before and you've done some experiments with them. And so I've, I value that. Um, so I don't feel like there's an obligation like in the system for me to do that, but I do value it. I think, well, I guess one thing I was thinking, it doesn't seem great to say they can come in and work on it on their own time. Cause then like we mentioned this before, like we have a lot of students who work a lot. Right. And so is that an unfair, totally, you know, so there's that, is there any way, like, would you be able to do what you're doing? And then have like a period of three weeks at the end or something where you say, great, w whichever experiment you want to do a deep dive on, then you can, you know, you could do a longer project at the end. That's interesting. Or so, go back and finish yeah. whatever at the end. So the way that um, my, the way, yeah, that's really interesting. So yeah, there's two classes, two analytical classes. The first one in the series, I don't do that, but that is interesting. It could be like, extra time if there was an experiment that you're really bummed didn't work out the, all the stuff is around and you can yeah do it or it could be i mean there could be so many things that could be done with that um in the second level of analytical chemistry instrumental analysis we do have at the end a final project where they spend more time with one instrument and get to know it a little bit better so that is kind of more deep dive oh, yeah. in an effort to balance these things mm -hmm. um but I do think for that class as well, it might be useful to say, gosh, if if you're really bummed that for whatever reason you weren't able to get great results on this one experiment, here's extra time to do it. That's kind of an interesting idea. Yeah. Hmm. But it seems like it sounds like you are hitting the right balance. I'm trying to, but yeah. I always I'm, I keep thinking about it. Well, yeah, I mean, I, it, yeah. Good yeah. To reflect. As we do. <laughs> We're reflecting. <laughs> exactly. We yeah. But it does sound like you have a good balance. And I think. Yeah, I don't know. Because then what would you do if some students finish and other ones don't? So right. next week you're like, okay, we're just going to stay in on this one. Totally. It would and be... I do, yeah, uh, like I, sometimes it, I feel bad when I'm like, no, you have to leave. And they're like, gosh, I could just, like, I have time. Can I just stay for half uh, another hour? But I think overall, I prefer ending it because you know, everybody can't stay for an extra half hour and, and I don't want to stay for an extra <clears throat> half hour randomly well, yeah, too. You, and, and, um, so yeah, overall, I think I like keeping it to the lab period, but I can, it is sometimes they really want to stay and how weird to kick them out when they want to stay in the lab, you I know? know? <laughs> I know, but like you said, you know, 
you can't be there. And right. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that is, it's interesting dilemma. Yeah. But I think, I think you are hitting the right thing. Well, good. Because then you said if they have this final project, like they do get to kind of they have do. that experience of mm-hmm. managing a longer yeah. experiment. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And in both classes, we end with a final thing that they get to spend a little more time on. So, yeah, yeah, Sorry. that is true. That is the balance. So, what are you Look, I'm going to point to my notebook because you can see it says like everything. Everything. Triple underlined. <laughs> so, I think here I'm talking about some of the things I talked about earlier on that I don't totally know what the objective is. Okay. And I think being new, like you just sort of feel like, okay, well, I'll just do whatever everyone has done before. Right, and course. I think maybe this is the problem. Like maybe I just need to be more conscious about Decide how I, what you want to yeah. Do. And I think one thing I'd be really interested in doing is I've been thinking a lot about dissemination and like how they communicate the information they have. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of mythology around physics of this like lone genius working on the back of an envelope or whatever and I think it's a bummer and it doesn't convey to students that like no really at this point you're going to need to be able to communicate and you need to communicate with other people and one of the big things that's been happening in physics lately is these giant consortiums of research like in LIGO and it involves like universities all across the world and cool one of the biggest things apparently like someone who had worked on this project she was like yeah people really get upset about people's email skills that they don't have them and so or like just they don't know that they have to communicate better i see and so last a couple of years ago i started this project of trying a project idea of trying to get the students in the second physics sequence to make a lab video make and a i lab was video. delighted with myself i was cool. like oh, this is so cool i'm like a hip young person uh-huh. and they kind of hated it oh no and some of them did make literally the funniest most <laughs> amazing videos like so hilarious with blooper reels and all kinds of things oh man that sounds awesome and i think my misguided self i was like this is what we're doing every week and they were like we can't do this every week so oh. i've kind of limited it to two a semester now and well, i was trying to good. like i would love the idea of having them have all of these different media for how they convey their information mm-hmm. so maybe and the other thing they do that semester is write a more formal lab mm-hmm. report but I did I read this article or I went to a talk where someone talked about the most influential article they'd ever read in physics what a great talk it was a really good talk and there's a journal called the physics teacher which is awesome but someone suggested instead of lab reports having students write a letter home okay about what they did in lab that week Ooh. and they could It didn't matter who they wrote to, but they had to say, like, this is to my third grade sister or this is to my grandmother or whoever it was and make it appropriate for that audience. I see. And so and he said he did it and it was just this transformational experience for getting students connected and excited with what they were doing. That is great. I'm writing that down. And I think the class that we have co-taught together Mm -hmm. where we have... It's like incoming freshmen and it's a more general science class. Right. But I think that would be so beautiful for that's that. That's a great idea. Just like write to them and tell them what you've been doing and have that connection with home. So that's something I would love to do. I love how that involves connecting the material they're working on with things that are meaningful to them. Their their family, whoever right. they want to tell this about. Um, and, and it involves reflecting on the material. That's just lovely. And I think there is, again, physics and it's ways but there is a thing especially for younger physicists where it sort of feels like the objective is to sound as smart as possible oh but if you actually have to say no this is too like a second grader you need to think about how you're going to convey this information right and it's not going to be through equations like you need you know what i mean and so that's i really like the idea of that and kind of having to pitch it towards a certain audience that's lovely so yeah so but i haven't done it i've never i keep that's thinking great. i'm like that's such a lovely idea but i haven't implemented it so maybe that's what i need to do so you were talking about these awesome videos that they make yeah um i don't know if this is it seems like maybe a solution to them hating making the videos is to say they have an option of making the video or oh. writing a letter or i don't know whatever other media is depending on what you want them to practice but if they have an option, then the ones who hate making videos might write a letter home. Or I that is a really cool idea. Because my first idea was to have them give a talk. And then I think some of them hate it so much. Sure. Giving talks. So I was like, oh, maybe people feel less stressed about doing a video. Uh-huh. But um, yeah. And some of them, they are, 
really really funny they're Maybe, very creative and awesome oh it sounds great i'd love to see them yeah yeah <laughs> we could definitely i just well maybe you could call it communicating science communicating or something this is the science. communicating and, science. Science. and they the get to thing. pick how they're gonna do and it could be a talk if someone wants to do oh it. my god i love it okay that sounds fun once again Man, i want to do you this solved my problems <laughs> that's it is actually good somehow just actually articulate and this was the one that I knew we were going to do. And I've been like, I don't even want to prepare for this because like I hate labs and I don't know what to write. But <laughs> it actually just even reflecting on it and being like, OK, I think this might be my problem that I right. don't have a clear objective. Yeah. And if there's stuff I can get excited about. But I don't think I think that's the problem that I'm not like having that thing where I'm conveying excitement to them. Right. You know, and I that think they sense. like they don't they kind of I, I hope students buy into the class. And I really like the activity portion because I'm really like, yes, this is where you're going to learn the problem solving skills. But I just don't bring it for the labs. You're not excited think, about the labs. Yeah, yeah. And I think that is abundantly clear mm-hmm. too. That makes sense. They Whenever we talk about our dreaded student evaluations, but the lab portion always gets a lower mm. evaluation. And I think, and, and deservedly so. So this is my, okay, I'm well, excited. Now I feel yeah. better. Good. This okay. is great. I'm glad we're reflecting on the things that, I know, and, and really even helpful. when you suggested it, I was like, really? <laughs> but then, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad. Oh, good, that's funny, because okay, I cool. really like the labs. Maybe we should pick one that I don't like. Okay, then, cool, we'll get with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, cool, thank you. So I think we are getting longer and longer getting every longer time longer, we get so. more chatty. Great. Yes. Um, thank you for joining us today. And please do reach out and contact us if you have any suggestions about teaching labs or celebrity professor quotes or just anything at all and if you would like to help the podcast please do leave us a review a positive review yes please <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah uh yes and oh, our well. email address yes, is contact professor podcast at gmail.com okay awesome thank you thanks thank ralph you. thanks ralph <laughs>